All right, we're going to go ahead and call our November 19th, 2020 Lake County Board of Supervisors uh, special meeting to order. Uh, it is 9 a.m. As customary, we will uh, stand for a moment of silence. Do we have any dedications today? All right, hearing none from the board, I'm going to dedicate today's moment of silence to the 250,000 people who have lost their lives uh, to the world in the United States. Supervisor, Supervisor Sabatier, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? No, that was flag. Yes. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, one item on this agenda today, our number four point, item 4.1. Item 4.1, consideration of a resolution authorizing the chairman of the board to approve and direct the tax collectors to sell at public auction via internet tax defaulted property, which is subject to the power to sell in accordance with chapter seven of part six of division one of the California revenue and taxation code and approving sales below minimum price in specified cases. Um, and I think uh, we're going to have, who will be presenting this item? I think I saw Barbara on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, so okay. I think we have Barbara on her. Yeah, I phone. I do see her name here, but I don't I don't really? hear or see anything. Does you see M down feature disabled? Is is that you, Barbara? Um. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, first, I want to thank you for um, bringing this forward on, in a special meeting, uh, moving it from the 12-1 agenda. Um, it allows our staff um, a little bit more flexibility and allows them for um, uh, uh, easier accommodating for our noticing of our timelines. So um, we are bringing this forward to you for our tax sale um, in January. We did make it in January, but it's the end of January, January 29th through February 2nd. Um, and we request the approval to um, conduct this tax sale in January. Did, okay. Are there any questions? Yeah, are there any, any questions from board members? Supervisor Sabatier? You're still on mute, Supervisor? You saw my lips moving, but no, yeah. no sound. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the, I reached out to uh, Ms. Ringan asking her, uh, some of the minimum bids have been reduced because of the fact that it's the second time that it's being put out on auction. And so I requested to ha have identified the amounts that it was more reduced. And so basically what that means is anytime that there's any assessments, such as the ones that we've talked about recently with uh, code enforcement and things like that, if there's any assessments that have been added in, if there's any um, fees or interest added in, that those potentially can be reduced. I don't believe we can reduce the back taxes, uh, but maybe Ms. Ringan can correct me on that. And so the total for the reduction was approximately $830,000, $839,000. And I believe that the total of the entire um, uh, properties put for the tax auction is approximately $3.6 million, which is a, a really good amount. Um, 
I'm just curious and have the, uh, the question to Ms. Ringan of what is the uh, criteria and what is the process on deciding what can be reduced and what can't? Uh, is that a unilateral decision on the tax collector's office? Is that a conversation with uh, code enforcement, whether it's the county jurisdiction or city jurisdictions, that we're not going to be collecting the assessment? Is that a conversation with the auditor controller to see how that's going to impact our teeter because it may not refill it in the same fashion that it would if it was just the straight uh, base minimum bid? So it's just a, a curiosity question on the process. Of course. So um, at minimum, the parcel has to be offered for sale at least once. Um, and several of these parcels, if not the majority of these parcels, have been offered at least twice, if not multiple times. And so when we're not able to sell it for the um, what's owed for taxes, at that point, we can lower the minimum bid to encourage um, bidders to, um, to um, purchase the property. So it's not a, um, we don't have to reach out to the um, taxing agencies in order to do that it's just that um that's the tax collector's responsibility to sell these properties at tax sale um at whatever bid um the market will allow and then i believe you did have a question about the deficit sale portion or the apportionment part of it Is, could you well, ask that question because liz can probably help I, I guess you did answer my question in the sense that I understand that on the second time around that it's possible to reduce it. I was just wondering if there was a process where there was communication between departments or between jurisdictions uh, to ensure that the impact that uh, they will that will be felt uh, by the reduction is uh, known at the very least. I understand that you have that capability to reduce it however you see fit to sell it and I think that's a, a, a good thing to do uh, and I was just curious if there was communication um no we do not reach out to um, the other agencies at that time we just look at the parcel condition um, um, various factors and then we reduce the bid accordingly okay and then today is the 19th and um, January 29th is when it's supposed to start, correct? Yes. And the uh, state controller's office manual says that there needs to be a minimum of 70 days from today. And I believe 70 days from today would make that January 28th. So that definitely gives you a very small window to ensure that all the paperwork is filed so that the January 29th date for the sales to, uh, for the tax auction can occur. I just wanted to make sure and check in that that is uh, correct and that is going to be possible. Yes, and I don't have my manual right in front of me. I don't believe that's a mandatory date. I think that's a suggested date. Um, the other requirements, noticing like um, noticing interested parties, publications, those have actual statutory deadlines that we do have to meet. But I think on the board, I think that's a suggested timeline, um, but I don't have the manual right in front of me. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions from the board? Supervisor Crandall? No, I'm just glad that we can get this, uh, we can get this on so we can continue forward. I know that uh, along with the rest of you, we received emails about an auction and I know we discussed it and uh, I'm glad that we're here taking the opportunity to get it done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the board? All right. Here I, we're going to go ahead. Just, just to follow up. I just looked it up. It says uh, for many significant factors, the time frames listed are suggested upper and lower cutoff points from which certain tasks should begin. So it does say suggested. Uh, not 100% sure what that all means, but uh, as far as all the wording, does that mean it's suggested to be in between? Is that suggested to begin? Uh, but she is correct that it does say suggested. Uh, how it's actually interpreted is a different story, but hopefully we can get it done so that it does appear on January 29th. It's going to be on bid for assets. Is that correct, uh, Ms. Ringan? Yes. Yes, that is correct. And 
uh, can people sign up all the way up till January 29th? Do they need to sign up uh, a, a little bit earlier? Is there a process for being approved for being on bid for assets? I want to make sure that our, uh, the public is well aware of the process so that uh, we can get as many people interested in taking these properties. Yes, there are requirements. Um, the, they have to set a deposit into bid for ass assets and register as a bidder. Um, so their funds do have to clear prior to the start of the auction. Once this um, sale is approved, we will have information on our website. Um, also, 30 days prior to the auction start date, bid for assets will also um, have our sale posted and information concerning uh, the detail of how they register um, and the terms of sale would be posted there. Okay. Thank you very much for the answer. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions or comments from the board, we're going to go ahead and open this up to public comment. Jake, would you please open the room? All right. I've sent a unmute request out to the floor. And if you'd like to make a comment, please unmute and state your first and last name. If you'd like to make a comment, this is the time to do it on this item. Okay, Jake, uh, let's go ahead and close the room. We'll bring it back to the board uh, for action. Chair Simon, there's no one in the chambers at this time to make comment as well. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Mr. Chair, I offer the resolution. Okay, Supervisor Sabatian. Aye. Supervisor Crandall? Aye. Supervisor Scott? Aye. I don't think Supervisor Brown is here, right? I, I do not see it. I, I do see one phone number, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. The phone number's gone. Okay. And then Supervisor Simon? Aye. Thank you. Okay. With that, that is our uh, one item we had for this special board meeting. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Yes. Can I just ask? Uh, um, actually, I, I, I will send the document of the uh, reduction in minimum price to Ms. Hutchinson to make sure that she shares that with all of us, since it does say on there approving sales below minimum price in specified cases. Uh, and I do not believe that that was actually identified on the documents that we received that are available in the public. Okay. I just, I just realized that. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, all right. With that, that, that takes care of our one item on this uh, agenda item for today's special board meeting. And with that, we're going to go ahead and adjourn. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. you.